How's it going? Ryan here at eTrailer.com. Today on our 2018 Ram 2500, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Airlift Low Lifter 7500 Air Spring Kit. Many of today's newer trucks ride more like luxury vehicles as opposed to the old days where they rode like farm trucks. Well, that's a nice ride that we want to maintain, especially whenever we're carrying a heavy load. And that's what the airbags are going to accomplish. Whenever we're weighted down, they're actually going to be able to bring our truck back to that normal ride height, helping our suspension out to achieve that smooth ride. So to give you a good idea of what the airbags are gonna do for you, we're gonna go ahead and take some measurements. Now this is with the stock suspension, no airbags, and no weight in the bed of the truck. Here at the front of the truck, from the ground to the bottom edge of our wheel well, it's about 40 and a half inches. And here at the back of the truck, from the ground to the wheel well, that's right at 43 and a half inches. So now we'll go ahead and put a substantial amount of weight in the bed of the truck and see how it affects our suspension. Now we went ahead and added that weight in the bed of our truck and now we can take our measurements again. The front is going to be right at 41 inches. And here at the back, it's going to sit at 41 and a half. So that just gives you an example of how even a little bit of weight for such a heavy duty truck can affect its suspension. Whenever we are weighted down like this, the back of our truck is going to be squatting and the front of our truck is going to be lifting up. Now that can affect a few different things. One, our headlights are gonna be shining up in the air, possibly another motor size and not on the ground where they should be. It can also affect our tire wear. Since our tires aren't going to be square on the ground, you're gonna wear them out unevenly and reduce their overall life. And since those tires are wearing like that and not flat on the ground, it's gonna affect your steering and your braking. And in fact, that's one of our customers' main complaints, is that increased tire wear and just overall a bad ride. Now let's go ahead and take our truck through the test course and see how it does. We'll start off by going over our bumps. Now right away, I can already tell that we have some weight in the bed of the truck. The suspension doesn't really feel like it has all that travel that we did have without the weight. The truck kind of just feels like it's getting thrown around and the steering wheel definitely has some play in it. it. Just feels like you don't have as much control as you should. Now we'll go ahead and take our truck through the slalom course and see what happens. So I'll gain a little bit of speed and do some evasive maneuvering. Now just with these first couple turns, you can definitely feel that weight kind of trying to throw us around a little bit. And I'd say we definitely have more body roll than what we should. Now that we have our airbags installed on our truck and that same amount of weight in the bed, we can go ahead and take our measurements again. So here at the front, we're gonna be right at 40 and a half, which is the original ride height unloaded. And here at the back, we're gonna be at 44 and a half inches. So that's actually one inch over our factory ride height. So now that we have our airbags in, we're gonna be able to fine tune them, regardless on how heavy our load is, to bring our truck back to that factory ride height, which in turn is going to eliminate all those potential problems, such as increased tire wear, reduce braking and steering performance, and eliminate our headlights from shining up into the sky and not on the road where we need them. So now we'll go ahead and get back out onto the test course to see how much our ride has improved. So as we go over the first couple of bumps, right away I can definitely notice a difference. The suspension feels like it's much more reactive, which in turn just makes the truck feel more planted and responsive. The steering wheel isn't getting tossed around. We're staying in a straight line. Just feels better and more reliable. So now let's go through our slalom course do some evasive maneuvering and see what the difference is. Now I will say the improvement over the bumps was good, but in my opinion, this is where the bags really shine. No body roll at all, much more manageable. The truck doesn't even feel like we have any weight in the bed. So overall, to be honest with you, I was a little bit skeptical that airbags would make an improvement on such a heavy duty truck. But after getting them on, and driving it around with some weight in the bed, I was proven wrong. You actually can tell a notable difference. 
enough for me personally if i had a truck that i used to haul a heavy load i would definitely want them installed just to have that peace of mind knowing our suspension will be in good shape and not to mention that better ride quality so this is what our air spring is going to look like installed underneath of our ram now one of the main things that really separates this air spring from some of the others is the fact that it's an xl which means it's going to be very heavy duty so it's going to work with a plethora of types of hauling so whether you're hauling something light or something extremely heavy you're going to have maximum adjustability to find that perfect ride now since it is very heavy duty it's going to be very well built not only the bag but even down to the bracketry everything's going to go together really easy and just fit nicely many of our customers said that whenever they were hauling heavy trailers boats equipment whatever they may have they were tired of their trucks squatting down, wearing their tires out, having to fight it going down the road, and just overall bad ride quality. And they said they were pleasantly surprised with how well these actually worked. So like I said, this will work perfect for those heavy duty towing applications, or since you can lower the pressure quite a bit, it's even gonna work great for those lightweight applications as well. The bags are adjustable, from five all the way up to 100 PSI. And since they are quite large, seven inches in diameter, they're going to have more volume than your traditional standard style bag. And that's gonna give you better leveling strength, especially at lower air pressures. The air springs are gonna have a 7,500 pound load leveling capacity. But there is something I wanna point out. That isn't going to add or increase to your truck's overall weight capacity. It's never a good idea to exceed that factory weight capacity. And if you're not sure what it is, you can check in the owner's manual to figure that out. Now compared to some of the other suspension enhancements available, the air springs are gonna have some both pros and cons. Some of the pros being that we're gonna have ultimate adjustability to fine tune our ride, and they're just gonna provide us with a more comfortable ride. Now some of the cons is, we are gonna to have to maintenance them every now and again. Since they do require a minimum air pressure, every now and again, you are gonna to have to come back, check it, and make sure it's at least set at that. Now to make that maintenance and adjustability even easier, you can pick up a compressor kit that'll work with the air springs and allow you to make all those adjustments easily from inside of your cab. So ultimately, these are just gonna give you a little more peace of mind, knowing that your tires and your suspension isn't getting tore up providing you with that smooth ride so you can focus on your drive and not worry about anything else. Well, some of our customers actually wrote in and said they were very pleased with how everything turned out and how easy the installation was. And I personally agree with them. There's no drilling required and everything's relatively straightforward. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and put the air springs on together now. To begin our installation, we're going to first start by assembling our air spring. We want to take the spring and make sure the top is facing up towards us like this. So the top is going to have three holes that are threaded here, here, and here. Now with it resting like this, we can take one of our roll plates and set that in position. We want our holes to line up with the holes in the spring. Let's kind of set it over it like so. And then what we're going to do is take our upper spring bracket. Now before we put this on, we are going to put some hardware in it. The hardware that we're going to be using are these shorter carriage bolts. And they're going to go in these square openings with the head of it facing down towards the air spring, like this. Now one thing I like to do to help keep them from falling down is just grab a piece of tape Just kind of tape it to the bottom of that bracket. Same carriage bolt for this square hole. We'll tape this one down too. Now this is going to sit on top of our air spring and the holes are going to line up with our air spring holes. So this one, this one, and this one. So we'll just set it on there like that for now. Now we're going to secure all this together using the shorter button head cap screws. So these will just run down into these holes. We'll just get these hand tight. 
And then we're gonna come back and torque them down to the amount specified in our instructions. Now we can install our air line fitting. So what we're gonna do is put that in this hole here. And we're just gonna tighten it down hand tight. And then I'm going to use a wrench to tighten it down an additional one and a half turns. Now we're gonna take our lower bracket and with the flanges facing up, what we're gonna do is take a hex bolt from the bottom, slide that bolt up. We're gonna take the thick flat washer and a nylon lock nut and get that tightened down. Then once we have it tightened, I'm gonna come back and torque it to the amount specified in the instructions. Next, we're gonna go ahead and put in our long carriage bolts through these square openings. These will also get put in from the bottom. These will slide through. And we're gonna do the same thing that we did to the other carriage bolts by just putting a piece of tape over the top of them. That way they'll stay in place. What we're gonna do now is flip our air spring over We're gonna take the other roll plate, again, lining up the two holes. We're gonna take our other bracket and bolt this all together. Now, when you put this on, you're gonna want the washer to be on the same side as the air valve on the bottom of our bag here. We'll lay that in place and then secure it using these shorter button cap screws. Now once we get these hand tight, I'm gonna come back and torque them down to the amount specified in the instructions. Now underneath the vehicle, something I do want to point out is that I did actually lower our spare tire and I did that for video purposes to give you guys a better look. This isn't something that you're going to have to do. Now to get our truck ready to get our air springs in, we're going to have to get our wheels off the ground. So for those of you at home, you can use a floor jack and some jack stands, raise the truck up high enough that your wheels will be hanging off the ground. But since I'm using a lift that is a drive on, I'm not able to do that. So what I'm gonna to do to increase that distance is use this pole jack. And when I turn it, it'll actually push the frame of our truck up, essentially doing the same thing as lowering our wheels. We're gonna move this vent tube out of the way to make room for our air spring. And it's just held on by a little push pin fastener up here that you can pry off with the trim panel tool or even a flathead screwdriver. Once we get it off, we can just set it to the side and kind of let it hang out for now. We're going to need to remove our factory Johns bumper. And to do that, we're gonna take out two bolts, one here and one just like it on the other side back here. So I'll use a 16 millimeter socket to get those out. Now we can attach our upper frame bracket to the spot where our factory Johns bumper was. Now when you put this up there, you want this large hole to face towards the outside of the truck or towards the tire. 
And you want this elongated hole right here to face towards the back of the truck. Now we're gonna use the larger button head cap screws to get that secured. Now that they're snug, we can come back with a torque wrench and torque them down to the amount specified in our instructions. And I do want to mention from this point on, anything that I do torque down, it will be to the amount specified in our instructions. Now we can take our air spring assembly and fish it through this hole and into position. Now the carriage bolts on the top here are going to line up with the corresponding holes in our upper bracket. This can be a little tight, but just take your time and you'll be able to sneak it in. Now since this is resting pretty close to where it's going to be permanently mounted, down here where our carriage bolt drops through, it's actually starting to kind of interfere with this little bracket that's holding our brake line. So what I'm going to do is use a 13 millimeter to take this bolt off and that'll allow that carriage bolt to line up straight and then we can just re-secure that bracket and bolt. Now with it resting straight, you can go ahead and just bolt that back into position. Now I went ahead and lowered our truck a little bit to decrease the size of the gap in between the frame and the axle. What that did was it allowed the carriage bolts at the top to line up with the holes in our upper bracket. So that's where the carriage bolt comes through. Now we're going to secure the top of this carriage bolt and the one on the other side using a flange nut. We'll just get it hand tight for now. And I'll use another flange nut to get it hand tight on the other side as well. Now we can grab our clamp bar and put that in place. Now our carriage bolts are going to slide through the openings here on the bottom side. And we want the part that's beveled like this to face up towards our axle. I'm gonna slide the bolts through, push it up flush. And then we'll just get these nuts hand tight for now. And whenever you tighten these down, you do wanna try your best to keep the amount of threads exposed past the nut even with each other. Now we're gonna go ahead and tighten down and torque the two bolts that attaches our upper spring to our upper bracket. Now it is a relatively tight fit, so to get these torqued down, I'm gonna be using a crow's foot. Now we can come down to our clamp bar and tighten and torque down the hardware here. And again, whenever you're tightening these down, try your best to keep these threads overhanging as even as possible. Now that the driver's side is complete, you're just gonna repeat that exact same process over here on the passenger side. Now with both of our airbags installed, we need to figure out where we want to mount our inflation valves. Now the spot that I chose is right here and here and that's because it's nice and open yet easy to get to and we're not going to have to worry about anything behind this plastic there's a ton of room to work now since we determine the location we're going to know where we need to actually route our lines to get them back to the bag 
Now that we know our locations, I'm gonna use a drill bit and drill those holes out so we can slide our inflation valves through. Now we're gonna take one of our Schrader valves and before we push it through the back of our bumper, through the hole that we drilled, what we're gonna do is take a nut and thread that on. Followed by a star washer. And now at this point, we can take it, bring it around back, and push it through the bumper. Then we're gonna put on a rubber washer. Followed by a flat washer. and then another hex nut. And go ahead and tighten it down. Now I went ahead and ran our airline back to our airbag. And the route that I took, is this comes out right here, behind our bumper beam, drops down here. And then I just followed the factory wiring, just zip tying it every now and again to keep it secure. And from that point, we can just grab our airline and kind of run it over to our fitting here on top of the airbag and kind of eyeball the length that we need. That way we can cut it and get it plugged in. Okay, so I went ahead and marked the spot that we need to cut our line. Now I'm going to be using an airline cutter tool. And you can find one of these here at eTrailer.com. If not, you want to make sure to use a very sharp edge like a utility knife. What you don't want to do is use a pair of snips because we need this cut to be very clean and straight. That way we don't have to worry about it leaking. So the way this works, this goes into the groove. And you push down. And you want to look at the line, make sure it looks good, clean and straight, just like that. Now to get our line plugged in, it's very simple. You just push it into the fitting all the way back. Make sure it's in there nice and good. And then you just want to pull back on it a little bit to make sure that it doesn't come out. Now I went ahead and routed the airline over to the passenger side. And this is a path that I took. It came out right here. Just looped it down following some factory wiring. And I came up and over to the other side of our frame rail. I just followed it along down to our air fitting. And I plugged it into the air fitting the same way that we did the other side. Now we can inflate our air springs to 40 to 60 PSI. That way we can check them for any air leaks. Now we can use some soapy water to spray down all of our fittings to check for those air leaks. Now what we're looking for is bubbles to be rapidly forming. And if they're not, then we know everything is sealed. We're all good there. Now if you do have bubbles rapidly forming here at the bag, what you're going to have to do is pull your line out, recut it to get it a nice clean edge, plug it back in, and check it. Now that we verified there's no leaks, we're all good to go. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Airlift Load Lifter 7500 Air Spring Kit on our 2018 Ram 2500.